and when it comes with water then explosion may occur this is a very serious problem which is due to scale and uh, it may also cause corrosion that will discuss later in the next session we will be discussing uh, about corrosion of boiler also and that is again due to scale and sludges you can see these loose and slimy precipitates are nothing but the sludge and here this coating is scale these are the pictures of two boiler tubes and this much hard coating is of scale which has decreased the efficiency of boiler this is nothing but the scale so we need to uh, remove it we need to prevent formation of scale and sludge in the boiler vessel now as we have discussed about uh, sludge and scale what are these how these are formed and what are their disadvantages now let us talk about what are the basic differences between these scales and sludge the first difference that is sludges are soft and non adherent deposits these are loose slimy remains suspended in the boiler water while the scales are hard thick and adherent deposits sludge can be removed easily simply by scraping with the brush if you scrap the boiler vessel with the brush sludge can be removed by blow down operation but the scales can't be removed easily some of the scales are so tough so thick that they may not get removed by chisel and hammer also sludges are formed by the substances which are less soluble and precipitate out like magnesium sulfate calcium chloride magnesium chloride etc while scales are formed due to different chemical reactions in the boiler that we have already seen like magnesium silicate formed due to presence of silica calcium sulfate whose solubility lowers down magnesium hydroxide which is formed due to hydrolysis of magnesium chloride etc so some specific chemical reactions are responsible for the formation of scales besides that sludges are formed at comparatively colder region of the boiler like uh, inlet or outlet pipes etc and these are formed at comparatively hotter part of the boiler sludges are less dangerous as they can transfer heat to certain extent certain extent heat can be transferred while scales are more dangerous and may cause explosion of the boiler so one should be aware about the causes the prevention method and removal of the sludge in order to maintain the safety of boiler this was the first problem happens in uh, boiler due to use of hard water scale and sludge formation now the next problem that we are going to talk about is caustic embrittlement the word caustic means soda normally we use word caustic which have some effect on our skin and embrittlement is nothing but distortion uh, destruction so if any destruction happens to boiler due to caustic action of a substance then that is known as caustic embrittlement we can define it as the phenomenon in which the material of a boiler becomes brittle due to the accumulation of caustic substances now from where these caustic substances come we use sodium carbonate or na2co3 for softening of water in one of the softening process known as lime soda process and due to this some sodium carbonate may be left behind in the boiler water this sodium carbonate reacts with water and form naoh or in other terms also known as caustic soda this is the cause of
caustic embrittlement so as the concentration of nmh increases in boiler water water flows into minute cracks and it get evaporated nmh increases further over the period of time and dissolve iron of the boiler in the form of sodium ferroate or nafeo2 means nmh reacts with iron of the boiler and convert it into n a f e o 2 this is the reaction of caustic embrittlement here you can see these are the cracks from where the steam is leaking and here the embrittlement is occurring mean has occurred means here the boiler material is removed or dissolved in the form of sodium ferroate so uh, this is nothing the uh, but the alkaline corrosion you can say of the boiler material to prevent caustic embrittlement we should add sodium sulfate or sodium phosphate in place of sodium carbonate means we should avoid sodium carbonate as it will block uh, hair like cracks besides that we can use tannin and lignin lignin also to block the cracks to avoid the contact between boiler material and nmh but we have to be very cautious as if excess of sodium sulfate is used then it may form calcium sulfate which may lead to the formation of scale so we should be very cautious while using the remedy or preventive measure of caustic embrittlement now the next disadvantage is and uh, disadvantage which may be caused uh, due to use of hard water in boiler is priming priming is nothing but a kind of carry over means in this what may happen when the water gets converted into steam in the boiler then some small particle of wa water or liquid water are also carried away that is carry over of varying amount of water in the steam is known as priming or in other words formation of wet steam or foam or mist is known as priming this is very dangerous priming as along with the water some of the particle of the salt dissolved in water may be carried away and they may get deposited to delicate parts of the machinery and which may lower the efficiency of that machine as well as lowers the energy efficiency the causes of priming one of the causes nothing but the formation of hard water presence of suspended impurities and dissolved water high steam velocity and sudden boiling sometimes if we cause sudden boiling in the boiler then also priming can be ha uh, can happen or if we increase the uh, formation of steam rate then also priming may occur if the water level is not adjusted properly very high may lead to the priming and by any engineering mistake or faulty boiler design priming can ha happen here you can see this wet steam formation is happening in the boiler how to prevent priming if all the causes which are uh responsible for the priming are removed then we may avoid priming means if the boiler design is quite good if we avoid rapid change in the velocity of the steam formation uh, avoid rapid change in the temperature if we don't keep water level high and maintain it low or 
if we fit mechanical steam purifiers which allow only steam particle to go not the liquid water so if the steam purifier uh, purifier are uh, fitted in the boiler then also priming can be avoided priming is wet steam formation which may lead to number of troubles foaming the word foam is nothing but leather so if in the boiler formation of small bubbles happen which are persistent continuously persistent bubbles are formed then that is known as foaming so foaming can be defined as formation of persistent small bubbles in the boiler or fourth on the surface of water this is again due to hard water due to high concentration of any soil as you can see in this animation constant bubbles are formed in the water how we can prevent it foaming can be prevented obviously by using anti foaming agents for example if we add castor oil in boiler water then it may avoid foaming besides if we remove oily particle using silicic acid and sodium aluminate etc then foaming can be avoided the fourth problem which may be caused in the boiler due to use of hard water is boiler corrosion corrosion the simplest form that we all are aware of is rusting is defined as degradation or destruction of material here boiler so degradation of or destruction of boiler material due to any chemical or electrochemical attack or of dissolved gases or dissolved salts is known as boiler corrosion means here the boiler material is getting degraded this is the definition of boiler corrosion the causes of boiler corrosion boiler corrosion can be caused due to three basic reason one is dissolved gases dissolved gases normally oxygen and carbon dioxide and other reason for the boiler corrosion is formation of acids due to dissolved salts we'll be taking one by one all these reasons and we'll try to see how they may cause boiler corrosion we all know that certain amount of oxygen is dissolved in water which is very much required for survival of aquatic animals now when the hard water consisting this dissolved oxygen goes to boiler then it may react with iron and may cause rust formation or boiler corrosion may happen so to avoid boiler corrosion due to oxygen we should make it deaerated corrosion due to dissolved carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is not at all present in water generally in a significant amount but if the water used is hard water then in hard water we have dissolved salts like bicarbonates chlorides sulfates etc bicarbonate salts which are causing a temporary hardness they gets converted in carbonates in boiler upon heating and carbon dioxide is released in this particular process this carbon dioxide may form carbonic acid and this carbonic acid may cause slow corrosion of the boiler material means carbon dioxide which is obtained from hardness causing salts causes boiler corrosion due to acid formed from dissolved salt these are all hardness causing salt magnesium chloride magnesium sulfate etc they undergo hydrolysis as we have already discussed in previous reaction and form magnesium hydroxide now this magnesium hydroxide is deposited as scale 
as we have seen earlier this is deposited as scale but the acid formed here causes boiler corrosion this acid may dissolve iron of boiler in the form of fecl2 which may get converted into feoh whole twice and finally in rust it may get converted into rust so a small amount of magnesium chloride only may lead to formation of hcl and this hcl may result in rusting these all were the causes of boiler corrosion now how this boiler corrosion may be prevented the first reason that we have uh, discussed was due to dissolved gases namely oxygen and carbon dioxide if we can remove these dissolved gases mechanically means if we carry out mechanical deaeration in the deaerator chamber here in the picture the deaerator chamber is shown water is fed from the top it is connected to the vacuum and number of perforated plates are there so when water trickles down water is fed from here it trickles down and passes through these all perforated plates it is connected to vacuum so what happens down the line it gets converted into deaerated water and finally we get the water which is absolutely free of gases oxygen and carbon dioxide and uh, here we can minimize the corrosion due to these gases besides mechanical deaeration we can also carry out chemical deaeration how let us see chemical deaeration can be caused using some chemicals uh, like uh, ozone like ammonia like fe2s etc they may uh, remove oxygen or carbon dioxide and in this manner the boiler corrosion can be prevented now this was all about uh, the problems caused in boiler due to use of hard water scale and sludge formation priming and foaming caustic embrittlement and boiler corrosion now we can remove these all problems 